Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. In this episode, we're gonna restore my Ferrari 308 rear calipers. Now I'd recently done like the soft lines and the pads and the rotors and everything was fine, but then the right rear caliper started to leak fluid. So time to send them off to PMB for a rebuild. Plus you'll get to see how Eric replates these things and turns calipers into works of art. Welcome to PMB Performance Gang. I should say welcome back because we've done some of Ian Carr's calipers in the past, but they were for his 914. Today we're going to be doing his Ferrari 308 calipers. If you're a 914 guy or a Ferrari 308 guy, you'll notice that the rear calipers are virtually identical. These are actually virtually identical to a 914.6 caliper, so 38 millimeter pistons, slightly larger, uh, but the Ferrari 308 has a vented rear rotor so it has the 10 millimeter spacers in the caliper halves. So basically we're gonna walk through these today and we are going to uh, tear them completely down to bare metal, to the bare metal castings. We're gonna show you how we pickle them, how we media blast them, how we uh, zinc plate them, and then we'll go back and do a reassembly and then we'll ship them back to Ian and I'm sure he'll take it from there. Now on to the teardown process. The first thing we're going to do is remove all of the ancillary items. So the dust boot covers, the handbrake arm spring, all of those type of items are gonna come off in our first step. When removing the inner adjuster cover, we like to take a cold chisel at the eight o'clock position and give it a quick tap. This allows us to spin the adjuster. They're often stuck, and this will let our four millimeter hex do the rest of the work. Here's an often overlooked step in the teardown process. These M7 fasteners are impossible to find, making them very rare. Here, Shane is taking a small dental pick and removing any debris that would be inside the Rebe R5 bit head. Remember, with fastener integrity being key, he's now using the correct Rebe R5 bit to remove the fasteners from this caliper. Once the 11 millimeter nuts have been removed, the caliper halves can be separated and we can remove the spacers and the seals. And here's a quick pro tip for these handbrake arm calipers. If you have a stuck piston, you'll also have a stuck handbrake arm. Some light, very light tapping with a hammer, she'll move the handbrake arm back and this will break the bond that the piston has with the body. Once the arm is broken loose and the piston, as you can see here, has moved, we can now take a wrench and the gear and push the piston out. Once we're certain the piston is off the adjuster, it may give us some grief. For this, we use a custom vise with slots cut in it so that you can grab the sides of the piston without damaging the top. Here, we will lightly tap back and forth on the caliper body until the piston lets loose. With the inner piston removed, it's time to turn our attention to the nose section of the caliper and the outer piston. Here's a little pro tip that allows you to get the piston out without using the adjuster. First, as you can see, we're taking the nut and tightening it down so it is off the clip. Here, Shane's going to remove the clip and we will then remove the 13 millimeter nut from the adjuster. With the nut removed, we simply tap the piston out of this half of the caliper. This saves wear and tear on that small four millimeter adjuster. Now the adjuster spins out by hand. As you can see, we're removing seals, and next we will turn our attention to the inner adjuster. For this step, 
Our technician mounts the back half of the caliper in a vise and uses two picks to go at the C-clip inside, pinching them together. Once it's removed, the adjuster comes out. The handbrake arm is held into the body with a light duty C-clip. Here, Shane is using a drift to punch the Welch plug through until the C-clip releases the arm. Once the arm is removed, he can take the drift to the other side and simply punch out the Welch plug. Great care has to be taken to retain the C-clip. That's a valuable little item that we're gonna need for reassembly. With the caliper completely disassembled, we are ready to begin the zinc plating process. After the calipers are disassembled, they're pickled in a hydrochloric acid solution to get rid of the grease and grime. Then they come here for media blasting down to bare metal. Next step, zinc plating. Our first step in the plating process is a mild hydrochloric rinse. From here, the calipers get placed in the zinc tank, which is where all the magic happens. Ian's fasteners and his spacers are all kept with the calipers and plated at the same time. Here everything's getting a uniform layer of zinc plating. They'll be colored differently after the process. After about 15 minutes in the zinc tank, we'll start to remove the parts. We'll start with the small parts first, so out come the fasteners. First step, is to rinse them off. After the rinse is complete, these fasteners will be dipped in the black dichromate. This will give them the traditional deep black color. After the small parts have been processed, it's time to get the caliper bodies out of the solution. We know they're ready when we see a nice, even, light gray layer of zinc all over the caliper body. Rinse and repeat, as they say, these caliper bodies are now ready for the yellow dichromate post dip. This is where the traditional yellow color comes from. They'll dip in here for roughly 15 to 20 seconds and they go off to the oven to be baked dry. Once they're dry, everything's pulled from the oven and it's assembly time. And now the fun part, final assembly. We've laid out all the bits and pieces that make up this pair of calipers. Here we've installed the outer adjuster mechanism and the bore seal, and the technician is applying the assembly lube. Our next step is to install the piston into the bore. You can see these pistons have been reconditioned. They've all been cleaned inside and the tops have been prepped. We simply lay the piston down onto the adjuster and give it a little spin to get it started. Next, while pushing the piston with the palm of our hand and our thumb, we turn the adjuster and pull the piston inside the caliper body. Once the piston is fully seated and the dust boot is wrapped, we'll back the piston out just a little bit to make sure that it's not too tight on the adjuster. Here we install the spring ring over the dust boot seal and carefully tap it into place to make sure it's seated properly. This piece is now ready for assembly as we move on to the next piece. If you tend to be the impatient type, we can also use a small cordless drill to pull the piston into the caliper body. Just remember to always back the piston out so it's not too tight on the adjuster. Otherwise, you'll have a piston that is stuck. As you spin the adjuster, the piston will not move. Moving on to the back half, again, we've already installed the inner adjuster and the technician here is applying the assembly lube. For this, it's extremely important that you use the Permatex silicone assembly lube that does not damage the internal rubber seals. 
The process is basically the same as the outer adjuster, with the exception of the inner adjuster being driven by a gear. That is going to reverse our action. So if it's going to be clockwise to pull in the outer adjuster, we're going to go counterclockwise to pull in the inner piston. And finally, we'll install a new inner adjuster cover. These new covers have a five millimeter hex, which is much deeper and works much better than the original four millimeter the caliper came with. Here the technician is installing again the spring clips that hold down the dust boot seals and again carefully tapping them into place to make sure they're fully seated. Next is the assembly process where the caliper starts to look like a caliper. The technician will use one fastener as a set post to assemble the caliper. He'll lay in the rubber seals and assemble the caliper in a horizontal fashion so that the seals don't move. Next, he'll lay on the spacers and then drop the back half onto the nose section of the caliper. Once everything is aligned, the technician will install an 11 millimeter nut and tighten it hand tight. This now allows him to jump over to the other side and install that fastener. Once all the fasteners have been installed and hand tightened, it's time to align the spacers. And as we wrap up the assembly process, we're going to put on the accessories. So we're installing springs and spring seats. We'll install the washers and clips over top of that, and the caliper will be ready for torque. Torquing the calipers is a two-step process. First, the technician will apply 7 PSI to the M7 fasteners. Following that, the technician will torque to 17 foot-pounds following the 2-3-1-4 pattern. Once that is done, he'll apply the torque paint to mark the caliper as finished. Time for these ones to come home in their shipping boxes and off to Mr. Carr's car. All right. The PMD wraps everything really nice. Look at that. Each caliper is in its own box. Wow, look at that. That's a work of art right there. Beautiful. All right, it's time to put the calipers on. And here's where they go. These are the shims that are gonna go in between the caliper and the attachment points here on the car. Okay, here's the setup. It's going to be bolt, lock washer, and then the caliper, and then the shims. Now the reason why there are shims is to center the caliper on the rotor. If there weren't any shims, the caliper might be to one side or the other, which wouldn't be great for braking. You want them kind of dead in the center there. It's just a little tricky to get this in without dropping the shims. <laughs> Look, I just did. And then we'll get it just so that the bolt is holding them in. Started a little bit. Going real gentle. Definitely do not want to cross thread anything in here. For sure. That would be a bummer. Okay, I got my torque wrench set to 60 foot pounds. And that's when I would torque these caliper bolts too. Okay, here's a good illustration of why those shims are needed. You see how the edge of the caliper is equidistant from the rotor. If the shims weren't there, the inside side probably be a lot closer or maybe even hit the rotor. Now I'll take the brake line and uh, 
attach it to the caliper and the soft rubber hose. First pulling out the little stopper that PMB so kindly put in there to prevent dirt from getting in the caliper. Tight quarters in here. My hand looks huge. <laughs> and now we have to get the soft line attached to the hard line here. Now I mentioned before that the soft lines and the rotors had recently been changed. So that's why I'm not changing them up here. Otherwise, I definitely would. This is about just angling the hard line and the soft line together so that the threads match up and everything goes in smoothly and that's got it cool and now i'm going to kind of double wrench this this is a i got a flare nut wrench on the line side and a uh, 17 millimeter on the other side to tighten things down i'm going in opposition and make sure that they're tight okay Okay, now I just have to put the clip in to keep everything retained. What I'm going to do is push the soft hose towards me, towards the wheel, so that I can create some space and just put the clip in. And I'll just take a screwdriver, give it a little gentle coaxing. There we go. Now we'll take the e-brake and hook that in. Definitely don't want to forget that. That's on that side. And then we'll tighten the flare nut on the bottom. Now just put the, uh, the brake pads back in. And again, these were relatively new pads. So we'll start to thread this through. This little pin thing. Now you see that little hole that uh, is the hole that the retaining pin is going to pass through. So I want to make sure that those holes face up on both of these so that I can put the pin in. That's the pin itself. Now I'll set the venting clearance through here. And what that's about is making sure that the pad is the proper distance from the rotor so the pedal travel is right and the e-brake works as it should. I want four thousandths of an inch between the pad and the rotor so I'll just measure it here first and of course I got a lot of space so I'm going to go ahead and adjust it. Put a 13 millimeter socket into a vice grip so I can loosen the nut. There's a C-clip on that so you can't go too far. Then I'll just use this feeler gauge in here and use the hex wrench turning it until I feel just a little bit of a tug. On these outers turning clockwise pulls the pad away from the rotor. Once everything's set, I just hold the inner hex adjuster with the uh, wrench here and then use the 13 millimeter socket to tighten that nut down to snug everything up. And I'll probably have to do this process a couple of times to make sure that the venting clearance is properly set. I'll check it again right now and then spin the rotor around and make sure there are no high spots. You also have to adjust the venting clearance on the inside of the caliper and that's accessible through this little cap here that has a little copper washer underneath it. Now here on the inside, turning the adjuster clockwise pushes the pad towards the rotor. So it's the opposite of the outers. Now all that's left is to bleed the brakes, probably a few times, and go out and enjoy the car. Thanks again to Eric and the team at PMB for all the amazing work they do on these calipers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do just click the button and the little bell so you know when new episodes are up. Thanks a lot for watching. Please be safe and enjoy.